damn, I love a good bit of motion blur. Whoo, it makes your photos look epic, it makes your videos look sick, so smooth, so... You want to capture that, you want to capture that feeling of, you know, just carving it up, yeah, your, your, your warp speed, your warp speeding. So I'm going to show you how I do that. But first we'll have a little discussion on what motion blur is, why you'd want it and how you can achieve it. Then we'll flick you over to Rob2, who right now is just riding in the blistering cold. He left nice and early this morning so he wouldn't be late. And he will show you the comparisons between the two, motion blur and non-motion blur. Until then, I'm going to have a nice sip of this, uh, this here coffee. G'day guys, welcome to Motorfields, I'm Rob Hamilton. So nice to see you, so nice to see your bright, shiny faces. This is going to be about emotion number blur. Emotion blur. Alrighty, what is motion blur? What is it? Why do you want it? Why do you, why do you want it? Why do you want it? You tell me why you want it. I'll tell you why you want it, because it makes your images look so ridiculously cool. It looks like you're flying through warp speed, through time and space, through the tunnel of obsidian <laughs> looks like you're just going really fast, especially on a bike. I feel like this is what you'd want. You know, this is just how you, f you feel on a bike. You feel like you're moving forward. You are moving forward. It's what you're doing. It's, it's how it should come across as well. Don't you agree? I think you agree. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. Okay, so motion blur, a quick little demo. Motion blur, this right now, that is motion blur. You can see it. You can see my hand is blurry and that is natural. That is a natural blurry motion vibe that is going on every single day of our lives all the time. So you want to try to translate this blurriness to video. And how do we do that? I'll show you how. This here is a container and it's what is inside this little container that will change your riding photography life. A tinted lens, just like this. It's like a, it's like a pair of sunnies for your eyeballs. And now this just goes straight over your GoPro lens like that and boom, your life will be changed if you have one of these. Trust me, it will be. The link for this is in the description below. It is a Freewell ND16. There are lots of other ND sizes. I'll go into that a little bit later. Now the settings you need to punch into your GoPro or your camera or whatever you're filming on to maintain that motion blur sort of feel is usually double the shutter speed compared to your frame rate. So let's just say you're shooting at 24 frames a second. Your shutter speed should be 1 50th of a second. If you're shooting at 30 frames per second, it's gonna be 1 60th of a second. If you're shooting at 1 20 frames a second, it's gonna be 1 2 40th of a second. That's the magic behind motion on camera. That's what makes it feel sort of real. It makes it feel authentic and it comes across to the viewer that way as well. And it makes it just feel a little bit more cinematic. Now ND stands for neutral density. All right, let's just cross over to Rob2 right now. He's just carving up a storm and he'll give you some insight of what we just spoke about with um, some settings and everything like that. Uh, Rob, are you there? It usually takes a little while to connect there. So we just have to... Hello? I can sort of hear his bike running. Uh, you there? Oh, hello? Hey, yo, right. can you yeah, hear me? I can, I can hear. Can you hear me? Yo. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear no, me? No, I can't. You can't hear me? Oh, he's breaking up. He's okay, well. He's breaking. Oh, well. All right. Okay, so right now we're just shooting auto. This is what you'll just get out of the box. Smash it on your helmet. Hit record. Away you go. No neutral density filter is used at all here. And you can probably see, like, it looks fine. You'll get away with it. It looks fine. You'll have a nice sharp picture. If you want to pull some stills or anything like that, like, you totally can, and it'll look fine. It'll look great. You just won't have any of that motion blurness to it. We'll pull up a frame here as well, straight off the footage, and I'll show you, show you what that looks like. So there you go. It's dead still. There's not much motion blur going on at all. It's just a, just a standard photo, as if you're sitting still the road. You can see almost the individual bits of gravel in the road and you know that's still cool you can post that no worries happy days but if you want to just add the extra bit of the bit of sensation as if you were moving okay, now this is with an ND filter on and the shutter speed is set to 1 60th of a second shooting at 30 frames per second and now you might tell the difference the road seems a bit smoother everything seems a little bit more buttery I'll just walk around this corner and pull a frame from it And see now there you can tell the difference. You can see the rocks are actually, they're blurred out a little bit. It looks like you're moving forward. But the slower your shutter speed, the more motion blur, but the more light that will get through. So now I'll take the ND filter off. And you see that everything is super overexposed. It's bright, it looks horrible. And that's because the shutter speed is letting too much light in. 
Boya, I think I nailed it. I hope Rob One is happy with that. I don't even know if he can hear me. So anyway, Rob, if you can hear me, back to you, man. Bro, that was sick. I really like the whole ND filter off thing to show you how much light actually comes in with the shutter that slow. Boom! Boom indeed. Ah, oh, you can't hear me anyway. So there it is guys, how much of a difference does this little thing make? Now like I said earlier, this is a Freewell ND16 filter. I'm not being paid by them, I bought this myself. I went out on a limb and I just bought the ND16. They do have packs of four. It goes from ND4 to ND32. So 4, 8, 16, 32. Now 32 is the darkest, so that allows you to have your shutter speed open even longer. So you may be asking, what the hell is shutter speed? What the hell, Rob, are you even talking about? So let's just pretend this is the shutter and this is the shutter speed, okay? So if you're shooting in auto, that thing's just gonna be flying. That's, it's just going as fast as it can to let the least amount of light into your sensor to make your exposure correct. Now, because we're setting it manually, we're hitting 1 60th of a second, shooting at 30 frames a second. That shutter is going to be open a little bit longer, which allows more light to hit the sensor as it opens and closes slower. Now, depending on your light source, if it's the sun, if it's studio, whatever, you have different grades of ND. So this isn't an ND16. They come from ND4, which is very light intense. That's when it's not so bright at all, to ND8, ND16, which is this, and then ND32, which is a very, very dark tint, which might be in super, super sunny conditions, or you just want to have even more motion blur so it looks like a complete and utter blur while still maintaining exposure. Now, if you have any questions about any of this, shutter speed, ND size, whatever it is, drop me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and we'll get you on the road and get you a motion blurness happening ASAP. Because we all know we want motion blur. This one I've linked in the description below. It's an ND16 Freewell. It costs like $30 Australian. You can buy the packs for like 75 bucks. That includes the four ND filters. These I like in particular just because you can snap them on. Boop, just like that. So quick and easy. Some of the other ones you have to pull this Yeah. <laughs> Some of the other ones you have to twist and pull your actual lens off and then you stick the other lens on and lock it in, which is definitely more secure. But for what I want to use it for, I just find it easier just having this little guy that's so easily detachable just because you could be riding through a tunnel and if you're going to leave this on there, it's going to be way underexposed. So as you're coming into a tunnel, you just want to pull this off. You might be doing it while you're riding. Chuck it in your pocket. Boom, you're getting all that mad tunnel blur. It looks sick. As soon as you're about to exit the tunnel, you just chuck this back on. Otherwise, it'll be overexposed and just crazy like you just saw. All right, guys, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you got anything out of it, if I answered some of your questions, please hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this stuff on a weekly basis. Until then, legends, peace.